be positive with it too, man. There's a lot of sides of this job and, and this path that we all choose to kind of do this or put our time into this stuff. Um, that's really mostly discouraging most of the time. The little wins and all the things that you can find to like help you push through and encourage your friends, celebrate their victories too. You know, if you get buddies who get on a gig or have something cool happen with their playing, just be as happy as you can be for them. Because the more people you have winning around you too, that just means you're gonna, I feel like, kind of have some of that fall into your lap too. Welcome everybody to Nashville Drummers Podcast, episode 23. Today's guest is John Bostwick, who is the touring drummer for Parker McCollum. Of course, he was just added as one of the special guests for Morgan Wallen tour, so that'll be really awesome to see him out there. Yeah, John was a, a blast to talk to. I had never met him before, and kind of when you come into these situations, you have no idea what to expect in, in talking to a new person, and it was just supernatural. Not supernatural, just super natural. Mm. You know? You know what I'm saying? Good clarification there. Yeah. yeah. It's supernatural. <laughs> it's magical. Yeah, John's awesome. He's just another one of these examples of the you know, these guys moving down here and just going for it. Just working really hard, you know, just trying to pay rent and just taking gigs as he can and then eventually he kinda hit gold and you know, he's got a really good gig right now, so we're excited to see where he's gonna go with that and so this will be the last episode for 2022. It's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Yeah, thanks for everyone that's been on this journey with us. It's been it's been really fulfilling for both of us, and um, we've got a lot more to come, don't we? We sure do. Y'all have no idea. Well, I mean, maybe you do. Yeah. Never mind. No, we've got some really cool announcements coming. We've got some merch coming, besides just awesome guests, of course, as well. Yep. We're getting a blimp. We are not getting a blimp. Might get a blimp. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Something I don't know. Cool. I don't know how we're paying for that, but... Um, I'm going to talk to Elon. <laughs> God. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Nashville Drummers Podcast, and we want to wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. So glad you're here, man. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Yeah. What'd you do today? Man, I was just telling him, just been, you know, back in my little studio space, trying to get a bunch of rag gear. Mounted up, and surprisingly, that takes a lot more work than I thought. Yeah. Everything's so freaking heavy. So I've been doing that today, and then just playing with the dog, and home for a little bit, so finally kind of settle in again. Yeah. What kind of dog you got? So I can't say it's my dog. It's my girlfriend's dog, but I love him. He's mm. a Pitbull Mastiff Lab. Oh. <laughs> so he's like 92 pounds. He's nice. He's a big boy. Yeah. But <clears throat> he's a great dog, and the yeah. drums don't bother him, so oh, he's kind of curious. So Yeah. He's a good little, good little partner. I oh, love it. Yeah. Sweet. So for those that don't know you, kind of give us the quick, who are you playing with? What do your current yeah. gig or gigs look like right now? Um, right now, I'm currently on tour with a Texas country artist named Parker McCollum. Been out with him for about a year and a half now. Um, and I've lived in Nashville for, I think, almost seven years now, I think, wow. which is crazy. It's, it's kind of been a blur, but yeah. 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 I don't know about you. I, my first like three years, I had absolutely no clue what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Just an ignorant fuck. Yeah, you got to be pretty naive. Yeah. I think that's half of it. Wait, so what, what do you call yourself now? Uh, slightly less ignorant. Okay. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little yeah. more enlightened. Yeah, no, I'm, 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 in fact, yeah, I'm an enlightened fuck. There we yeah, go. Yeah, there we go. I like that. That's, that's right. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, that's half the battle. I think it's just moving here, you yeah. know? And then also, I feel like if you think about it too much, you probably wouldn't do it because it doesn't make any sense. None no. of this makes any fucking sense. <laughs> no, it so makes it's, like, it's it's totally hmm. insane to yeah. just pick up and, and move here. What you gonna go and do try to do music in Nashville? Yeah, and play drums. It's just like you explain it to people and they don't really get it. Yeah. You gotta like leave everything behind and go do that. But I feel like if you know too much or if you think about it, you wouldn't do it because it, yeah. it's kinda scary. If you you know, looking back, it's like, man, I don't think I could do that twice from the stuff I had to do. No. I think yeah. moving here. I would, but it'd be oof, it'd be even it'd be harder. Yeah. Well, and yeah. where did you move from? I moved from uh, Cincinnati. I was living there in Ohio. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. um, originally from Dayton, Ohio. Yeah. But I moved to Cincinnati for music school. It was called uh, Cincinnati Conservatory for Music. Cool. Yeah. And I studied there. I uh, was kind of like a jazz head there for a little bit. It was like a bebop kind of heavy school there in the Dude. program and that I was in. I was not aware of that. Yeah, same. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the funny thing. I'm playing country, but I was like... None of my background is reflective of what I'm doing right now, per se. It's pretty funny. Yeah, that's but, sick. But yeah, I was mostly like a jazz head as a kid growing up, and I was playing in big bands, you know, like around town as a kid, and kind of sitting in with those when I was really little. And 
And I loved that stuff. It was so much fun. And once I finished music school, I left there and I said, okay, I'm going to move to Nashville and I'm going to just like keep an open mind. I'm going to pretend I have no idea because I didn't, you know, I'd never really seen a number chart. I was right. doing totally different kind of style of like music yeah. and everything. I just, my experience was so different to here. And so it was just kind of like a little bit of a shock. I'm like, man, I know nothing. And I have like barely any work going for me right now. Yeah. And I have no idea what I'm doing, but like. So what was it that out. made you decide to come to Nashville? Man, I was in, so I was back at that music school for about three years. And I was like, man, I'm just not. I'm not loving this. I don't need this stupid like fucking degree. I'm just like, I'm grateful for the time here. Love the experience here. But I'm just like, I'm ready to go play. I was already starting to tour with a boy band. I was actually based out of Nashville. No kidding. They were called Anthem Lights. Okay. It's one of my buddy's bands. He well, he joined the band a few years before I started playing with them. And yeah. And so he would call me whenever they needed someone. I'd actually like sometimes fly to Cincinnati during like often the weekends from school. So yeah. that was kind of like a little bit of encouragement. It's like, man. I'm already going out with these guys, getting a little work. Maybe I can like, you know, move there and actually get more than that and see what happens. And <laughs> so that was kind of like a catalyst for that. But yeah. yeah. I was playing with them and, but they even hated touring. So there was never really much of <laughs> that. So it was like bittersweet when we did, it was fun, but they hated going on the road. <laughs> oh my gosh. But, oh, I feel that. Yeah. yeah. The, road's, the road even, I don't know. I don't know your opinion on this. Let's get your opinion on this. Yeah. But like the road, even, <laughs> even like the good of it is like not as glamorous at, maybe at the very very peak it might be but my god it's still just like it can be just so brutal yeah you it's i, I hate that cliche saying you really have to love it but yeah yeah it's like it's when it's rough it's rough yeah and, but that's why half of it though i don't know it's just like yeah like you're naive and you're just like you know i don't give a shit i just love doing it man i'm just yeah it's worth it's worth the the extra kind of like you know, breaking your body to kind of do it a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. I, I just know that I'm going out for a month and a half. Cool. I know that I'm not really going to sleep. I'm going to get sick several oh, no, times. Dude, it's just, yeah. You just get bunk sleep, man. Yeah. You don't actually yeah. sleep when you're gone. It's just like, yeah. it's just kind of like a very surface sleep. Yep. And by the end of that whole run, you're just like, you're kind of like a shell of a man. You're pretty yep. dead. <laughs> <laughs> but you love it at the same time. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I was always better smiling sleeping. the whole time. Oh yeah. yeah. Sleep Most when you're dead, time. you know? Yeah. I like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. you, were, you were saying that as we came in. You're like, yeah, you just sleep when you're dead. Right on, man. Saying, yeah, that, saying that to Mark. I don't know if that's like the healthiest, yeah. like. I think that's Mark's you know? mindset, probably. <laughs> yeah, that, that, is, that is Mark. Is that what he says, too? Probably. I don't. It's, well, it just seems to be what he, he's always he's just doing something. Yeah. That like, sense of urgency, man. Yeah. 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 Wanting to do some stuff and, you know, because you love it. Well, yeah. li- life is short. You have a very, very limited amount of time to do all of the stuff. And to know that, like that impending, like memento mori, like the you know, very like Roman stoic, you will die. Know mm-hmm. that you will die. Yep. What are you gonna do yeah. with that time that's ever shortening between whenever it is that you die? Yeah. Who knows when that is? But every moment you're alive, it's getting that mm-hmm. much closer. Are you cool with like spending a lot of that time doing nothing? Yeah. Might, yeah. As well, not. might as well just go for it, man. Might as well with, go with just hard. a very, very big intensity, whatever you're doing. Yep. I love you that. Know, and it usually tends to work out though if you, if you do that. Yeah. So how do you how do you approach that? Obviously you've accomplished a lot. You've you've seemed to have in my opinion, you're going in the direction that hopefully that you've wanted to go. And it sounds like So you far, have. man, yeah. It's been it's been it's been a really fun ride. Yeah. How have you what give us your journey in getting here and, and getting to where you are now, obviously the how you got the gig, that kind of thing. How have you approached that? Because with that intensity, that passion, man, uh, I think that right place, right time thing kind of comes into it. Yeah. But I just want to—I want to answer. Well, that's, well, a well, that's a good question. That's a good question. Let's, yeah. let's break it, it into pieces. Let's talk yeah. about talk yeah. about your journey. I just want to—I want to parse out how since we're talking about mm-hmm. kind of living passionately and pursuing things yeah. with intensity. To you, to borrow your your word. Yeah, I just want to know your journey since moving here. Mm-hmm. We'll go back to the, the very beginning yeah. how you got started. In fact, you know what? Do you want to go back to the beginning? Let's or? go back to the beginning now. Let's change go there. my mind. All right, yep. let's do it. <laughs> so you're you're in. You're wearing a diaper. <laughs> when, and what happened? Let's go all the way it's back. That classic uh, <laughs> kind of like pots and pans as a baby kind of story. You know, okay. like a lot of people yep. have it. Yep. Played yep. in church a lot as a kid when nice. I was like. What what kind of church did you grow up in? I grew up Pentecostal. Okay, so very in, yeah. in, like speaking in tongues, yeah. very intense kind of like yeah. church worship went on for a little bit. And yep. I, that my mom and dad didn't want me to play in bars or anything, but they're like, 
You can play in church all you want. Yeah. You can do all like the school stuff you want, all the band programs, jazz band, what, everything that I could do, I did. Yeah. Because I was just obsessed as a kid. This is all I wanted to do, yeah. you know, and going into high school, it only fed that even more, you know, because the programs get bigger and you can do like statewide stuff. And, right. You know, did tried marching band, tried marching snare for a year, and that was kind of mm. like a like a successful mess a little yeah. bit. You know, did you ever do any percussion, or was it always drum set? Yeah, I did like the did like the classical percussion through high school. I didn't want to go do that in college; it just wasn't my bag. And yeah, you know, I just I loved playing drum set. Yeah, at that point, like you pretty much know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I was in that same boat. You so gotta I, be so intense with that. I did kind of do more. I, I decided to do classical. Yeah, yeah. And now I'm only doing drum set, but like, mm-hmm. but yeah, you kind of figure it out at that point. Yeah, it's it, but I mean, there were so many dudes at the school I was at doing the classical stuff and they were just like i said so much more intense with that and i was yeah. like well i'm are, they're gonna beat me out. so i'm like i'm gonna stick to what i love and kind of try to stay in my lane a little bit mm-hmm. but, it's hard to beat intensity it yeah I mean, yeah man yeah. <laughs> you know it's like there's always someone who's gonna like come at it harder than you do and yeah that's you know. a that's a good topic yeah. so like do we think does intensity beat skill or does well, intensity like, like beat talent yeah no, i think so to a certain, I think there's a threshold, right? I mean, well, yeah. to a certain degree, because you then you're going to run into people skill has who to be are first, intense and, then, and also skillful. Yeah, yes. you know, who are really at the top, kind of doing stuff. But well, I mean, okay, so for instance, I went to high school with a guy named Andy Davidson, uh, who was a sick snare drum player, and I found out after high school they're like, oh yeah, every day in PE he would sit. And just practice rudiments instead of doing whatever was in P. I was like, that was an option. Yeah, right. <laughs> Damn it, that was a great option. If I would have known <laughs> exactly. that I could do that, but that's the thing. Like, like he had, an, he at, at least he must have had the wherewithal to ask that question, which mm-hmm. means he was approaching that with more intensity. At yeah, that time. yeah. Like, man, example. That's. Especially at a young that's... age, it's like if you're a teacher and you see a kid that says, "I want to do this," yeah, and I just like I want to do it right now. It's like. Yeah. Get, okay, that's the half, that's half the point of school, man. Right. You want to help kids find what they fucking love to do. So, right. so exactly. what kind of music were you listening to at that early age? Um, from a you know very like, Christian yeah, home, so as a kid, and I was well. I was listening to a lot of like a lot of like CCM music and a lot of like live worship records as like a really little kid. I remember like when I was little, my mom she got this CD. It was a Israel Houghton Life in South Africa. <laughs> so there was a when you moved it, it went from Israel's face to a lion. And I was a little kid. I was just like, this is sick. And then you put the <laughs> CD in, and you're just like. Yeah. It's mind blowing, but I was listening to that stuff. Um, a lot of jazz records too at the time, like a guy named Hank Mobley. I just go to the library honestly as a little kid and take my backpack and just any CD that looked cool to me, I just grab it and then I just put it in my backpack. Well, I wish I checked them out first, but usually <laughs> I'd, it'd be more than they'd let me. And I'd just beg them. They'd say, "Okay, you can take the 30. Yeah, and then I'd go to my bedroom. Where my kit was. I'd put every, every CD in and just play through every song just like movie soundtrack everything operas like any just bullshit wow. i could find dude i was just i just wanted to play to everything it was it was like sparks going off when that's you amazing yeah this yeah stuff and stuff, I mean, that's like the know. equivalent of today just having you know spotify playlist and yeah i mean just let get music it so go much easier. through and just yeah. play what what comes to you you know yeah. just oh, my hands are doing this right now it's funny but i i just i would do that like every day as a kid and wow. never return the cds and then get like <laughs> really bad late fees my mom would kill me but you know it was just fun it was like such the for me it was like going, yeah, to track it was just, it down. but just but mainly i was like really drawn to like a lot of like a lot of jazz records as like a little kid and then a mix of kind of like you know more of the commercial stuff like worship records when i was little um, yeah. just all that and just kind of you know, loved R&B as well. Yeah. Just for a little kid, I don't know if that was normal or not, but... What kind of jazz records were you, like, really, really obsessed Man, with? Man, there was a, a Count Basie and Sinatra record. It's got, like, rose-colored glasses on it and um, a couple other songs that are just... Or Pennies from Heaven. I forget the name of it. Yeah. But that record is insane. That big band's incredible. Um, Hank Mobley's Soul Station was a good one. Right, all One of my old teachers mm-hmm. gave that to me when I was a little kid. It's really the he's kind of the reason I didn't want to pursue that route and like go again. There were dudes who were doing like jazz at school. We were yeah. all studying, but they were more intense with it. I liked it because how how much better it made you at everything else. Oh, yeah. sure. But they wanted to move to New York and do that stuff. But I was like, Hank Mobley died under a bridge, homeless. Yeah, and he was a fan. I'm like, that scared me as a yeah. little kid hearing the stories of all these dudes. I love just like mm-hmm. having the worst kind of outcome. I was like, man, maybe that's not for me. I, maybe I want to try to have something with a little more, like <laughs> a little more staying <laughs> yeah. and, and yeah, something protecting me kind of power. But that yeah. kind of stuff. Uh, Jamie Collum, he's a, yeah. a British like pop yeah, jazz guy. 
he's got a song called Photograph, one of his first records. And that song got me into jazz music. Wow. I was like, I might have been in fifth grade. And there's this piano solo on it. And I was just like, you know, it's just you're a little kid and you're just hearing it. And your mind's just like, just like shooting sparks. You're like, this is so good. Like, yeah. I'm yeah. hooked. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, that's, this is what I want to play. When so. that particular thing hits you, it's, it's weird because it doesn't hit for everybody. Mm -hmm. You can show that to, to, hundred people and you know maybe only five or ten of them are going to be like whoa mm -hmm. that is really special like, so you, you know yeah. maybe maybe a quarter or half of them will be like okay yeah that's that's interesting yeah <laughs> Mo but most are going to be like yeah, it's not i wouldn't gravitate towards that at all but yeah when that that's when that really hits yeah. you're like no no this is like this is beautiful to me mm -hmm. this this it speaks actually, like, to moves me. me right yeah. like that's it's hard to i've had that with certain bands, I'm like, no, this music is, it's gorgeous. It's I, I, I like, it's like a dream to me. Mm -hmm. like, oh, really? It just sounds like chaos. I'm like, oh. <laughs> it's like, like soothing to it, my man. soul. No. Yeah. I don't, what do you, <laughs> I, I, how do I, how do I share this experience with you guys? I want to. You're That's, describing flying formation, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, specifically, I was thinking not, <laughs> not about, yeah, I was thinking <laughs> about, this prog band that he's in. Uh, I was thinking yeah. of a, a band called Mr. Metaphor that I found uh, in high school. And mm -hmm. they were like, I mean, what would you, I mean, they're this really interesting kind of math rock indie thing. Mm -hmm. And I just like really interesting ambient sounds. And I shared it with so many people. And once in a while, I'll share it with someone who's like, holy shit, this mm. is really, really special. But usually I'll share it with people and they're like, yeah, that's, that's pretty weird. Like, <laughs> they just, ah! just don't I know you're like, yeah, I it doesn't wish always you could hit. hear it. Yeah. If you could hear yeah. it from, with my ears and my heart, this is like, this is, yeah. this is everything. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Well, then we got to play the stuff that makes them feel that way. Right. You know, so you can keep the lights on. And right. Play the stuff that makes and us that's go just like, fine. Because ah. I like I like them to get that feeling too. Yeah, I like how as a kid that you were just so open minded. Because I feel like most kids would just like. I know, I know for me, I was like, okay, I'm I'm into punk mm -hmm. rock, or I'm gonna only yeah. listen to the Chili Peppers or Linkin Park, mm -hmm. and I didn't really listen to a lot of other stuff. Yeah, what was it for you that kind of gave you like that permission or intensity to? Like, why, why was that important for you to, to listen to all these different genres? Man, I don't think it, it wasn't that deep. I think it was yeah. more of just, like, my attention span. Mm -hmm. So it was, like, <laughs> you know, accident. like, some of, I mean, I remember, like, some of the bands or CDs I'd listen to, I'd be telling my friends, like, oh, this one song goes, I couldn't, I didn't even remember the name or the band name. I was just, like, listening through everything. My attention span was so bad as a kid and still kind of sometimes. <laughs> but, like, that, for me, it really wasn't just kind of like a, like a practice or anything. It was just, yeah. like, I just loved listening down and just... It was just that, you know, like you said, that feeling of like, this is cool. And, but then I'd have to remind myself, like, hey, actually, like, read the back of the soundtrack, you know, like, see who's playing on the record and stuff. And, yeah. you know, actually remember the bands. Cause I have all these bands I loved and I just would forget the names of them cause I was just, you know, like burning through CDs. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> what's this one? It kind of looks like that. Yeah. Yeah. So was your list of, if you even had a list of like influential drummers at that early age. Yeah. Was that also as diverse as the music you were listening to? Like, were you picking up on, as you said, you were kind of looking at the back of the, or the inside I think so, man. covers, it, but it's seeing funny, who like, the players were? I don't think I sound like a lot of the players I listened to as a kid. Yeah. You know, like I love Jojo Merritt, but like, I don't play like him. I, you know, I'm not trying to sound it, but I remember like as a kid intensely loving him. Um, yeah. One dude, I really am a huge fan of still to this day. And I just... If I had to pick one dude, his name's Teddy Campbell. Yeah. He was like the drummer for the first American Idol backing <laughs> band. Yeah, he was. I don't know. Him. Just kind of oh, like an, dude, he was Teddy's, just kind of like one of those played with everyone. Yep. He was on the Stevie Wonder gig at one point. Uh, I forget who he's been playing with recently. What's yeah, that I don't song? Know. What's I don't that song? Lowdown. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Wonder, wonder, wonder. Who was that? He's playing with that band right now. I forget. Oh, is he? I Dude. forget the name of the guy, but yeah. see again, I'm like so bad at naming. He, but yeah, he's total total A lister guy. Oh yeah, yeah. incredible! Like yeah. really tight player, and I, that's the thing I was attracted to. I was playing; it's just like he was so tight, and also he was playing for like so many artists. Yes. That was like the thing I loved as a kid. I was like, man, I'm not like I get so nervous no matter how many times I try to do like a drum solo competition or like do that stuff. I get so anxious. I love playing like for and behind people. Yeah, and yeah. as a little kid, I was like, "That's what I really love doing." And that's so that's mm. kind of reflective. I'm, I'm like the worst example of trying to be like a solo drummer artist or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I, I love playing for people, and that's kind of where I found like my niche. I mean, luckily, yeah. that's that's like that's the gig. I mean, there's not yeah. many in solo 
you know, individual drummers like, mm-hmm. away from like the marching activity. Yeah, right? like I don't think I would feel like, like a clinic, <laughs> like a clinic or something, or yeah. you know what I mean. But yeah, you might be surprised. You think? Yeah. I don't know, man. I feel like I'm so meat and potatoes. I like sometimes I wonder. That's like, the thing. I, mean, I just came from Pasic. If you're familiar yeah. with that convention in yeah, Minneapolis, yeah. I mean, you know, all those drummers are mm-hmm. are known for the gigs they've had and the artists they played for. Know. Yeah. You know, Omar Hakim had a killer clinic. Oh, was he there? Yeah, oh, everybody. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dave Weckl, um, mm-hmm. Benny Greb was there. Mm-hmm. I mean, Benny's, I guess, maybe more of a you know stylistic He's been individual. For a yeah. Too finally, I remember, I remember when I first like every drummer was starting to like talk about him. He had the kind of like he just started that deal with Minel and mm-hmm. had some Dude. cool and like the sand ride came out that was like super cool. Yeah. And he's you love I I he's, love Benny. Yeah. He's Top disciplined too, man. He's yes, very he he's regimented from what I hear. Mm-hmm. He's pretty man. Did you watch uh, his Art and Science of Groove DVD? If you have not seen that again, as a kid, I was so cheap. I'd just get whatever I could on YouTube. I'd never buy any DVDs. Bro, I'm, I'm so I'm, like I'm, I'm the worst like student we're gonna sometimes I, with that yeah. stuff i'm gonna start we're, we're like or, trying to yeah. have nashville drummers mm-hmm. hangs just like with the right people on, that have man. been on yeah i want to like hang out and like wa- just watch some great stuff and i've got that i went I loaned it out to a friend i'm gonna bring it get him to mm-hmm. give it back there is a moment in that where he he's explaining the whole thing is how to get your pocket deeper and deeper right yeah because his pocket's insane well then he talk about he he wasn't like a naturally kind of like yes He's drummer. If to, I don't know what to degree, but he would he said he would talk about how he's like I couldn't actually like I wasn't like a naturally kind of like yeah I don't he, I don't know like to me well, he probably could still been amazing but I he, think yeah. he really he's, had to like he, he said developed. he's like you know people talk about the the pocket and feel thing and they'll say you're born with it you either have it or you don't yeah and that was it. very disappointing to me because I didn't have it and he wanted it right yeah. and he has proven that. That it is not a fact that mm-hmm. you either have it or you don't, because yeah. he is his pocket has come leaps and bounds from when I first saw him. He, for, I mean, he was always like a good player, but, but you can kind of see his progress throughout the yes. years, even as like a clinician too. And but there's this moment where he's talking about subdivisions and understanding subdivisions, and he's like, and really getting comfortable with them. He was like, the the deeper your understanding and comfortability get with them, the deeper your pocket gets. And he proceeds to play along to a sixteenth note shaker. Just that's the track, and he plays quarter notes, and it's the most beautiful thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Yeah, perfect. That's it, the money right there. That's my so, spiel about that. The story about how like regimented he is. Yeah, I worked at Minel during like COVID when everyone just like just oh. like lost your entire fucking life, and yeah, yeah. they were apparently uh, I had heard through a drummer friend of mine that they were, like hiring other drummers, like younger dudes, and which makes sense. You you kind of want drummers to work at a at a warehouse right. with drum stuff. They maybe handle it with a little better care, but somehow I was able to get a job in that warehouse, you know, and survive through the year. Yeah. But apparently there was a, one of the drummers there, this guy named Jason, he mentioned that Chris Brewer, the artist guy, I think yeah. in his mm-hmm. desk or somewhere in that office, he he said he saw it. It's a, one of uh, Benny Greb's like practice blogs. And <laughs> he was talking about how fucking regimented the guy is and wow. just flipping through <laughs> these page after page, like logging hour after, like... Yeah. And I was like, okay, so this is no joke. The dude was like, just very, and it's for like years. I need to ask Chris so, to show me that. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's maybe dig. He could yeah. probably say like, I'm a fucking liar, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that uh, the I, he, that, that drummer might still be working there. I'm not sure, but he was like, yeah, dude, he's got one of his like practice log books, and he like looked there, and like one of his like original DVDs, I think. Yeah, because it makes sense. Cause pro- mine will probably like helped with some of that stuff. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. So it makes sense that he might have it. Be highly yeah, motivated if you can get hands on that, yeah. that'd be pretty cool to look at Ooh, and just kind of see. So cool. Yeah. Talk about intensity Ooh, again, right? That's another right. level. Oh, Myth. Yeah. I'm, I'm, writing, I'm writing that down. I'm a, yeah, Chris Brewer, I'm a text like, he's Chris like, yeah, that, dude's, as as that yeah. dude's a goddamn liar. <laughs> Chris, I know it's here. Show it to me. <laughs> yeah. Listen, just I'm insist gonna, that it's I real. Exactly. I have an inside and source. Start, we'll start posting on social media. And that's actually one of the things that I, I've been speaking of insisting. That's one of the things I've been doing downtown. I've been telling people. So, you know, I play a lot of Tootsies. I'll tell them. Oh, I'm really? Like, every day, I'm like, hey, y'all tried the lobster? It's not on the menu. You got to you gotta ask, really ask insistently for it. <laughs> just really, like, they're going to tell you it's not, well, we don't serve lobster. And you keep just, asking. Just keep, keep asking. Pushing. They've got it. They really <laughs> trust me. Are you just screwing with people? I, they do not have lobster there. But that is. And they get really, <laughs> really frustrated. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That's not, that is something that's you kinda, would do. That's yeah. kind of mean. Just People are here on vacation, pot. you know, and they're yeah. like, oh, I'm going to get some yeah. fucking lobster. Yeah. And then that's, some guy that's, really likes seafood. Just get their, I've, I've get their got, hopes up. 
We got a bit of a mean streak. Yeah. A little bit. Just a tiny bit. <laughs> Who hurt you, Nate? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who didn't hurt me, Dan? Yeah, all that's, of Broadway. That's a shorter list. Jeez. Well, anyway, <laughs> nice segue there. I want to go back to something you said about how, like, early on, you you wanted to be like the the band guy, right? You wanted to be behind. Yeah. You wanted to play for many different artists. So, I guess take us back to, you know, moving to Nashville in those early years. What those gigs were like? Like, were you doing Broadway, or were you just trying to land those different artist gigs? How did, did you approach that? I did Broadway, like, I, probably like my second year into living in Nashville, and that was like the best thing for me. But when I first moved there. I had a family friend that I knew about and she's like, I have a room above my garage. And I'm like, she's like, you're welcome to like, you know, like schlep it up there till you find a place. I was like, awesome. Free space. I didn't have any gigs. So I just kind of like packed my car. I think my sister like put some of my drums in her car and we drove there and, and then they left and I was like, well, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I don't have any, I don't have any plans. So yeah. I just, I set up it's in kind of a, garage. A, probably a very freeing feeling. A little but bit, scary, but it was also right? like, <laughs> man, I don't know what I'm doing. And I also at that time had the realization of like, I'm not as good as I thought I was. I'm mm. like, I need to like really get my shit together. And the only thing I could think to do is like, well, like within a month, all the money I saved up, I thought like 800 bucks was going to like somehow like sustain me and that was gone. Right. And then, you know, so I was just like, well, I'm going to set up my kid upstairs and every morning I'm going to wake up. I'm going to go on a run, which I hate running, but it was still like do something important. you hate in the morning. Yeah. Therapeutic. So yeah. I'd go do that, you know, not be able to breathe by the end of it, run back to the house, shower, and then just sit behind the kit. And I'm like, I'm just going to keep playing. And I was not good at like going out to go meet people. You know, that yeah. was, I was so anxious about that stuff because hmm. it was just like, just a lot of putting a lot of pressure on myself to like do this whole thing. You sure. know? And yeah. Then, but that was really hard, the networking and stuff too. And so that whole first year was kind of like, figuring that out and like the first week in town I did get a call from you know people come to the woodwork I had a buddy who knew me from when I was a kid back in my hometown and he was there he's like hey dude I need you I got a gig this weekend <laughs> with this guy he'll be over at your place to like rehearse blah 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 I'm like that's all I knew so he shows up and he was like asking me for charts and I'm like I've never written a number chart in my life it was all you know it's like okay here we go like but, I guess yeah. it's like yeah you know and that's why you kind of be naive so you're like yeah Everything that comes your way, you're like, you don't care if you look stupid or if it's just like, you're mm -hmm. just like a failure. And some mm -hmm. sometimes it's like, yeah, it's part of the process, man. You yeah, know? fail quick, learn quick. You know, totally, dude. Yeah, <laughs> fa fail over and over. Mm -hmm. Like get, get yourself in a position where you can fail safely. That's real. Yeah. That's huge. Or no one knows that you're doing it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Sometimes. Yeah. True. I want to. I just want to circle back to one thing really quick because you you said something that. I wanted to ask about, and that was you said, well, I, re I realized I'm not as good as I thought I was. What was it that brought you that realization? Um, I think just, uh, oh man, I'm trying to remember. There, there was definitely like a gig or two where I, I played for some people and I was just like, man, I can't like push a band a little bit. Like mm. I got, I'm, I'm not really good at driving. In, in terms of being here, I'm like, it's not a big band or it's not like a worship team or some shit or or any of the gigs i was doing back home like i'd, I'd never played any country or just played that more just kind of like real just meat and potatoes yeah. kind of mm -hmm. playing so i just moved here and i was just like man i'm just like i can't play that you know i'd, I'd never played any rock or country and the most stuff you kind of get asked to play here is rock and country yeah <laughs> so i was like man i gotta do my best like bullshit rock and country till i can like actually make it believable a little right. bit so again you just kind of say yes to that stuff and you go in and i was just like Man, and also the realization of like, I'm not getting any calls yet. It's yeah. like, you know, if people knew I was in town and like say I was doing really well or was good enough, I would be able to look at what I'm doing and that would reflect it. And so right. I had to really tell myself like, hey man, you're not busy this year. You have like two shows, mm. you know, two gigs and you're just, every time your phone goes off and you get a call, you're just like, I would just say yes. Cause I was like, I didn't want to ask how much it was at the time. This is mm -hmm. so bad to say that. Cause I just... It, it's against everything I believe in. But you're just desperate. It's like, hey, man, I got a gig. I'm like, yeah, man, I'm down. And like, I'm <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, let me check my calendar. Just like, just right. nothing. It's like, yeah. yeah, I can fucking do the gig, man. Yeah. Like, give me, I'm just like desperate. Because it, because it is a gig and you don't know yeah. where that's going to go. Yeah, I don't care. Right. And, and whew, that first year or two, that first year, man, there was some sketchy gigs I did. Mm. Playing with some just random ass country like artists that you'll never hear about. Just find myself in some weird places and just going like, <laughs> Fuck me, dude. Like, yeah. This is like, this oh, is crazy. Man. Just get home, get play the gig and get home. Yeah. You know, sometimes. I have, just like, well, I I have done myself. some of those. Yeah. yeah I feel like every Ooh. musician's kind of like, 
Yeah, well, <laughs> my, my favorite is the is <laughs> try not to cry. You know? Is uh, well, and you, I mean, you know now. It's like the concept that I I know you're familiar with. We're all we must all be familiar with at this point. It's whenever they say like, yeah, you know, we're gonna go do such and such, and the pay is not guaranteed. But like, no, but the, it's it's turnout mm-hmm. based. But the turnout's gonna be awesome. Like, and that oh, I was just like, I'm like. Oh. Yeah. I heard that one before like, about 10,000 times. Yeah. I'm like, that doesn't mean shit to me. Oh yeah, man. It's going to be 250 people there. Yeah. Like it's going to be, it's going to be great. I'm like, yo, what is my guarantee? <laughs> Cause yeah. I'm not going yeah. to freaking Harlan, Kentucky, not to reference a real gig. It's very specific, <laughs> specific. Yep. Um, Lots of name names. Yeah. <laughs> Get the to turn around and be like, wow, cool. I made $5. Mm-hmm. That, in yeah. no way Oof. happens And you're just exactly playing for like the me. other bands watching you. That's it. Right. Yeah, that's not good. Yep. <laughs> but man, there's a little bit of camaraderie in that too. There is. You know, as long as it's like, but it, I mean, that's the other thing though. Like you got to tell yourself too, like at least, for, at least for me personally, I was like, man, I, I also have to make a decision because like no matter what, I have to make money, you know, and I have to, you know, I want to do this for a living. Right. But if certain things aren't kind of like clicking by a certain time, I have to like shift and be real with myself. And that's a scary conversation to have with yourself yeah. too. It's like, man, on the safe side, I need to say, maybe what if I'm not good enough? You know? And I don't know if that's necessarily healthy to say, but like I had to ask I think myself. It is. I'm sure we've all had that. Yeah. Cause you know? it's like, again, I'm naive. So like, I don't want to be at a certain phase of life and, and kind of like doing it a certain way. And that was just me personally, you know, I was mm. just like, but I'm just so intense again with it. It's like, and it wasn't like an extreme thing of like even quitting music. It was more just like, Maybe I'm not going to be touring a certain way I want to or playing for this. So maybe I need to like look at it a different way. And for me, it was also just going in on my strengths too. And what helped yeah. was like, you know, I grew up in a singing family. So I was like, again, like moving yeah. there with not much going on makes you go, okay, how can I make this work? And it's yeah. like, man, maybe you should start singing more again. And it's like, I hated doing it, but I was like, it's like, maybe you should lean into that. Yeah. And it's like, I was going to say, you, you dude, sang earlier. Better. Press like, your advantage. Like, yeah, oh. Good voice. <laughs> Yeah, use what yeah. you got, man, and and that's the thing. I think most How of my life, I wanted you know? to be like this drummer's drummer. And yeah, I, was like, I don't want to be the dude that you know, just like like singing a drummer, this and that, or like get called for this stuff. And I'm like, wait a minute, like it's like, hey, man, you're not, you're not, you're not in this situation to be like making some of those bargains. Like, this is what you got, and you need to like lean into it. And ever since then, you know, I'm so glad I did that. Mm-hmm. But also, like moving here made it makes you decide quicker about things. But it's like yeah, I'm desperate. I need to like whatever I put my time into. I need to make sure it's like. You know, mm-hmm. dude, there's nothing yeah. like desperation to help you. It's get essential. Really man. creative. It's essential. Dude, the, Being scared be, to death is so important. Oh my God. <laughs> I can't, yeah. I can't recommend it enough, mm-hmm. but really it's because it's hard to synthesize that. Mm-hmm. It really, like if you're, if you work really hard, you can get yourself in that mindset, but there's nothing like going into a situation where you're like, this is sink or swim, like burn the boats kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like, well, I, if I don't make this work, I'm in trouble. Like, yeah. I don't make rent. I played with this group with a guy. I actually, he wasn't on the gig at the time. He took a break for this. I went on this on the road and played this uh, festival with this right on. Th- This guy, Jacob Zichelli. He's this incredible cellist. He, oh, you're playing drums with a cellist? Well, that's he wasn't cool. there for this. Game. He ordinarily uh, played. Okay. It was they actually just had a bassist come in and fill in for him. But he he is this phenomenal virtuoso. Uh, in the words of my friend Noah Needleman, he said, "Maybe not best cellist in the world, but t- certainly top five. Producer Noah uh, Needleman. Yeah, plays with Brett Young. Yeah, yeah. You know Noah? That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay, yeah, <laughs> cool. Yeah, small that's, town, man. Yeah. yeah. So Noah's <laughs> younger brother Jeremy's one of my best friends. So, okay, cool. Right on. But Jacob played for Rush. On their when they had their like symphonic thing going on on that tour, holy shit! And he purposefully blew all the money that he made on that tour. Be- Told this story because yeah. he's yeah yeah that's right I did I forgot he d- he did it because he's like I need to stay hungry. Man, I thought I was, wow. I thought I was extreme with that approach. Yeah, you know, like, and that's that's why he's that's why he's as good as he is. I mean, is. like, maybe you can invest a little bit of it. Like, you know, but he's like, he's like <laughs> nah. NFT, NFT or something. Yeah, or buy some gear with it. Yeah. Bro, well, I mean, maybe he he's did. just thrown it out the window. Well, I mean, yeah, like, he, like probably, he probably he probably he probably made some great yeah, purchases, yeah. Yeah. but he but ran himself mindset. out of money yeah. in order yeah. to back himself into that corner. I'm like. God, I love the balls of that. Mm-hmm. That's so good. It's hard though, because the older you get, you 
you need consistency and, and that kind of translates a little bit to comfort, you know, the older yes. we get. So it's like, how do you maintain the discomfort in the right ways, but still kind of like put yourself up in a way the older you get where you're still kind of like addressing like needs outside of just being a drummer, right. just being like an actual human, you yeah. know, taking care of yourself. And right. That's a whole other like, that's so interesting. conversation. Yeah. To me. I just pictured yeah. like walking on like, a, you know, those, those tightrope oh, walkers yeah, where it's like <sighs> they wobble, but that's some, some say they need to wobble a little bit mm-hmm. to yeah. kind of calibrate. Yeah. How they can walk straight across and be comfortable. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Well, and that's that's the thing is, is those guys they've done tests so like they actually wobble the same amount of times as as amateurs, but they actually do it faster. Interesting. So their their corrections are just happening like, at a yeah. faster pace. Fail quicker. Correct yeah. Quicker. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Oh, it's so back good. to that. Yeah. Same Everyone's exact failing. Thing. People are just yeah. people. You can just get really good at it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that's life. Yep. We figured it yep. out. We got yeah, it. Yep. Figure, that that whole comfort thing, man, it's, it, yeah. that, that is true, though, because it's like, you, you wish it didn't work that way sometimes. You wish it was like, I wish it didn't require for the, the whole, like, fucking building to be burning for me to be like, oh, I better get this done. Yeah. You know, and, and that's also, it's kind of like trying to almost, like, grow out of that phase at some point, you know, where it's just like a daily habit. It's tough, man, trying to trying to do that, too, because it's like, man... It, it's it's good for me, but once it gets you into a place of consistency, maybe even for a short time, it's like okay, now I don't have to run around like the building's on fire at least for now. Yeah, maybe I can like use this break and that chaos to like you know start some other things that can grow and hopefully be resilient enough when I get back into the shit storm. Yeah, you know wherever that <laughs> yeah. you know day by day, week month by year, whatever you know that you can kind of like. <laughs> it's it's I love that kind of talk. Yeah, I really do. That's awesome. I, I mean, it's just being resilient, you know, especially yeah. like. And I will say, man, I've I've seen some people who move here and they're they're comfortable. They're talented, but they're comfortable. Um, and I gotta say, I've never Ooh. been I've never been the best dude in the room. I feel like I feel like more like the turtle in the hair kind of situation. But I've just been really intense with what I love to do, to the point of just sometimes not in the healthiest way. You know, that tends to like translating some like relationships and you neglect some things and it's like yeah fuck okay maybe i need to also work on being a better human you know? yeah just like it's a balance not yeah. just yeah you know and i'm not that's like that's really hard for me i'm I, i'm like either zero 100 with stuff yeah so it's like if i'm doing something i'm like well this is you know it's just like fixed on that for a long time mm-hmm. and that's not always healthy you know but it's also trying to like to me that's the only way to do it man just move here and just like just fucking go. Like, yeah. like I had the bank calling me out while I'm walking on stage to play oh gigs. God. That's stressful because I'm like, I need this track rig gear, <laughs> you know, for these gigs. And so I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Like Rich Redman, there was like a, like a post he made and he's like, man, he's like max out the credit card. And I was like, dude, I remember thinking about that. I'm like, just do it. Just... Like, thank God I finally paid it off. But it took me, it took me like five years. Yeah. And like, holy shit. I remember at one point just, you just being so broken, just so scared, not questioning it at all, just being like, hey, it's part of the process, but freaking out, man. Yeah. And just being like, I'm about to go play this gig for 200 bucks, which at the time is like, you know, for, for a lot of a lot of people, that's like, hey, that's a good... That's, that's not bad. That's yeah. not bad, man. It's like, but I'm about to make 200 bucks. That's going to be gone, literally, as I'm playing it note by note. Yeah, right. Yep. The bank's calling me three times a day. <laughs> For the gear I'm using, and I'm just like, <laughs> um, and I'm like not talking to my family or anyone because I'm just freaking out. I'm like, I can't come to them till I'm like, got my shit together, you oh. know, and and just like they like a year, like, hey, like, are you alive? And I'm like, yeah, I'm good. And I'm just like always <laughs> coming like, out, of the out every week. Yeah, yeah. just oh like, my god, you know. But it's like that's why it's not wow. healthy, you know. But I'd get mad when people would say like, it's okay to take a break. It's okay to be healthy. And I'm like. Oh, fuck that man like yeah. you know but that was just me but it's not I again I acknowledge it's not the healthiest approach yeah and so I finally had to take time to like go oh, you need to like address some things and yeah take care of those a little bit but for the first couple of years it's like that's just a luxury I don't have time to like yeah. really address how I'm feeling mentally like I just gotta keep going you know and I, but that kind of stuff kind of just gets me pumped thinking about it I don't yeah. know it's a little fucked up but dude that's, <laughs> there, well there's I love that uh, there's a guy I believe his name is Zach to Lander, he's he's like a, he's a, a Olympic weightlifter, mm-hmm. and he he's got a great YouTube channel. Uh, yeah. If you're at all interested in Absolutely. weightlifting or fitness, dude, he's well, got. I'm not in that, but like the dudes who do it are pretty inspiring. So I'll listen yes. to them. Yes, well, well gonna... he's got a video you should check out called <laughs> "Toxic Champions Mindset." Yeah, and it maybe shouldn't be inspirational, like you're saying, like maybe it's not yeah, the healthiest but thing, man, but it like... inspired me. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's and the thing is. Those guys, like when you look at the very peak, they do have what a lot of people would consider a toxic mindset. And mm-hmm. they're, they're, 
I think my girlfriend's gonna love hearing this. Part of <laughs> oh, this is yeah. this is. But here's the thing about that. I believe I'm. I'm gonna say this for the record. I believe there is a time and place for that. I think. Mm -hmm. I think when you're building something, it's okay to have some of that and engage that on purpose. I think that's a great way to put it. Yes, it's, absolutely. It's not that's a way to live your too. life forever, <laughs> no. but for a season, it's almost like you're you activating. Can't. Like it's here, yes. and you're choosing to yeah, you engage can't. with it as you said, but it can't be all in every right. No, every you can't hour. keep that shit going forever. It's not right, you got to address it's, it. At you some point. become an unbalanced person, but <laughs> yeah. there, there is. You can go. You know what? For right now, next six months of my life, I'm mm -hmm. going balls to the wall on this thing because mm -hmm. I have to break through this wall mm -hmm. <laughs> i have to just demolish this goal yeah. yep. and then after that i can be a person again mm -hmm. right okay great but then it's like six months goes to a year goes right. to two well that's five that's, that's where the like, balancing act whoa. comes in and as you right. said like, like the reality starts to set dead. in is like am i because we should all have those goals and dreams mm -hmm. but at a certain point it's like well am i cut out for it like is mm -hmm. it is, Am I not getting the gigs? Like, why is this not producing those results? Right. It's good to have that in yeah. perspective. But it just but sounds like you've you've had. Well, I right? feel like it's something, and that's not even something like you ever you ever really say like at at some point I'm I'm it's like I'm never actually gonna quit. You, you know that, but it's yeah, like right. you just have those conversations because it's almost again like that fire of like, well, then if you feel that way, then then fucking like figure it out, then man, like let's right. go, you know. So for me, it's just like again, I'm either zero one hundred. Again, so it's like I can't have like a happy seventy five. You know, it's like and you <laughs> know what? Things, so you know, you get more done with zero or a hundred. Mm -hmm. You know what? And that that's the thing, honestly, because zero is ultimate rest. Yeah, and a hundred is ultimate productivity. And like, if you can, and Tim Tim Ferriss talks about that. He's like, you don't oh, yeah, don't right. don't be a. He's like, don't be a simmering six. <laughs> don't mm -hmm. just sit that like. Yeah, I'm kind of like just <laughs> yeah like. Either boil or don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, Love get, it. stop, don't just fuck around with it. Like, get it done or stop. Mm -hmm. Have you guys ever noticed you'll take a, you'll take some time off for like a day or two? That, this is where I've finally, like, the past year been like, I'm seeing the benefits of balance now and I've convinced myself it's worth trying to figure out. Yep. But it's like, man, there's some days where it's like, it's like, I'll take some time off from this, give my brain some space to just like you know breathe yes and i come back and i feel so much better and i have to like tell myself hey man you, you're not the smartest person in the world you don't have this all figured out so maybe you need to acknowledge that your intensity can come you know it's it's worth trying to find a middle ground so you right. can just have like a half day of this or yeah 100 like, or just an hour of something you know you don't right. have to just be like well this is what i'm doing for the week you can like yeah well a shift and in, intensity you know? yeah. is when you're pursuing something it's just like any fire mm -hmm. like you're you're burning fuel. Yeah, but in return, it, you need it to refuel those other fires too, right. which is good. You know, if you take if you take a day and just like recover mm -hmm. yourself. I went. It's been a while. It's been years. But before we moved out here, we went camping. My wife and I went camping with her family. Oh yeah. I was like three days, no phone except for the one time we went into this small town to grab a couple supplies we needed. I was just use it to check my if I had anything important, any text or whatever. So it's not real camping. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that was like, well, that was like five minutes of, of a three-day period. The rest of it was just like running around, cooking everything over a fire and like living in a tent. And not intense enough. Yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> Need, needs more intensity. Hunter gatherer. You right. So you, you don't have just a knife and a loincloth to do it. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Nate no. is a certified glamper. That's for the record. Yep. Yep. That's what I just thought. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah, uh, it was the best. Yeah. It was the best. I'm like, cool. Being totally disconnected, totally just like, mm -hmm. it's so important. This is amazing. Wake up and I mean, you're not really supposed to do this, but we let the fire burn all night all night because it was a totally where our area was very safe to just let that happen. All the campers uh, everywhere in the in the bar probably. Was. Glam yeah, yeah, you're glamping. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he had yeah. Wi-Fi. Yeah. Walmart parking lot. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I think it is. Well, I'm, I'm going to pose this question. Like, do you think it's a direct relationship? Like, whereas, like, the harder you go in something, you need more of a break. So, like, if you're going to, like, if you're so, staying man. up till 4 a.m., if you're going super hard on whatever it is, then you take, like, two days off versus, mm -hmm. to your point, like, kind of simmering, having breaks throughout yeah, all that, dude, but then you're yeah. not advancing to where you want to be. Like, right. you're, you're, the car is going, going so slow. I guess you kind of be the judge of that and find out if it's worth it. For me, it's definitely yeah. like, you know, but it's like, I, at least at this phase of my life, I'm like, man, you know what? I have a little more consistency right now. I think I need to work on the balance part now. Yeah. But I remember, like, again, like, first moving here, it's like, 
man, like, I don't, like, until I get this thing working, I, like, I don't feel like I have a right to do anything else, you know, <laughs> I, you know what I mean? Like, because I moved here, you know, like, I don't want to waste time. Like, what am I doing here if I'm just, like, but again, there were some times where I was like, man, maybe there were some days where it's like, should have gone to that friend's party or should go hang out, with, you know? Because sure, again, yeah. it, it, it still is beneficial and so healthy for you. So I had to learn how to like, yeah. I had to kind of teach myself to kind of do some of those things a little bit. And in return, it it did help. So it was like, yeah, you know. That's great. But again, I think it all just goes with whatever, you know, your phase of life too. It, you know, mm-hmm. I feel like if some people did it exactly how I did it, they would like hate it and it might not work. Yeah. I feel like everyone kind of finds their own little, like I think of every musician here as like a, like a plant growing in some concrete. Mm-hmm. It's like if you can find that sunlight, man. I'm like I'm hanging out there, this other crack of concrete, going like, yeah, man. You like you figured it out. I love you that. photosynthesizing too. It's like yeah, I man, am. we made it to the sunlight a little bit. Like fuck yeah. And if you're not, like keep, you guys seen keep the, growing, man. Oh my, just keep just reminded me the that movie Sausage Party, right? Sausage Party. A movie uh, yeah. you've seen? Yeah, that, man. Seth, uh, that's like Seth what that Rogen was. Film. You've seen that? I have not seen. Oh, that. So I think it's the funniest movie I've ever. They like animate a grocery store. Pretty much that's hilarious. I, yeah. <laughs> that's what that reminded me. Yeah. Of. They're all just cheering each other on trying to get out of there. And, <laughs> but it's super vulgar and, but, and sexual. And I, I, do, I do recall that I was... I they're making a sequel, I just heard. It's been like a while. Oh. I think too they like canvassed as like a family film originally. So like people went to the... They, they didn't like put any previews out. Or I think the previews that did come out, it looked like a fun like family. A, yeah, and, like a cute... They did that on purpose. Like animated, So yeah. these family show up to this fucking movie. <laughs> and they're just like... Like the opening... There's like an orgy yeah, at the end. Yeah. Right? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Dude, it's... Oh Horrific. my gosh. If my... So it, funny. Oh, those parents probably had so many like questions from their kids yeah. when they took them out of that place. What's that you said? You want to learn how to play drums, but you don't know where to begin? Let me humbly suggest to you that you head on down to Music Lab Nashville and you talk to their crew of fantastic teachers and you jump on in and start your music journey right there don't want to learn drums want to learn guitar ukulele mandolin trumpet vocals keys sitar maybe not sitar but all the other stuff for sure visit nashville.musiclab.co to learn more and sign up for a free trial lesson I want to go back to, I really like what you were saying about like playing those gigs where, you know, you had the bank calling you and like you realizing like the money you're making is literally just like yeah. diminishing every, it's every song. Right. Yeah. Not really in the, what's the, not the, <laughs> the what's the green or the net positive. Really yeah. I, I think that's, I know for me, that's super relatable. Mm-hmm. I think for a lot of drummers, like you take gigs and I remember just going to get pizza after the gig and like, mm-hmm. there goes the money I just made. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's tough, but that's kind of like along that track of toward, mm-hmm. you know or even like going to, I remember like going downtown to play Broadway like, yeah it's like, like p- paying for parking yeah, alone pay for parking it's like well oh, I'm hungry up. now and I'm obviously gonna get some food on the way home cause it's like 2am yes you know the only thing opens cookout so I'm gonna go there and get an Oreo <gasps> shake god what's up cookout. M&M baby oh m M&M, and what's yours oh uh banana pudding oh okay yeah that's what you start asking guests like yeah. oh, your cookout favorite order? cookout shake yeah. yeah what's your cookout order yeah. man it'd be a double cheeseburger hush puppies Cause I was so tired too. Yeah. We just played three hours. I'm like, yeah. you don't yeah, give exactly. a shit about your diet. No. So I get like a double Oreo. It doesn't shake. even count at that it's point. A reward, no, dude, you burned off it's so many. That's, that's the other part. Mentally, yeah. mentally, like you're not doing great. You're tired as shit. You're fun. You're like on a high because you you know had a great gig and you're yeah. You know, yeah got to play with your buddies. But at the same time, you're also not eating great. Yeah. You know, it's just like <laughs> there's nothing really in this line of work that's like in your favor <laughs> for like like Constant health. Else. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's like there's not a lot of it that's like oh no man be do this for a living. It's really great for your body. You yeah. know, it's like yeah. like my knee, like my knees hurt, dude, from Broadway. Like oh, carrying dude. all your symbols and all your shit after that gig. Oh. If you were to write out like a job description just... for being a, a full time drummer, it, oh man, nobody would be. You know, no, no, it's thing. You got you, know you got to like be a little was, naive, yeah, man. It, was it, it, yep. it doesn't make sense at all. And when it's really good, you know, when there's a musician in a really great situation, it's like a normal kind of like job benefits. It's in like a normal job situation. <laughs> so yeah. it's like yeah. a musician's like. Pete kind of like, oh my god, this doesn't get better than this. Is like, right? Someone's more, like yeah. basic, like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, you yeah. know, like I, I stock grocery shelves, and that's like what I do. And it's yeah. like, right. So it's, you know what I mean. So again, that's that that whole kind of thing of like, I hate that cliche saying, but it's like, yeah, you do gotta fucking love it because it's yeah. not happiness. When know. it's when it's when it sucks, it sucks, and when it's great, it's great. Mm-hmm. It's really never like a never experienced like a medium like oh, this is nice. Yeah, or it's just like <laughs> it's extremes, you know. And then also yeah. like, oh, this is. 
it's been a good year, you know? So. Yeah. Mm. So I guess my question to go along with that is, do you remember like a gig where you were like, okay, now like I've kind of reached that next level, maybe financially, or just like you've felt maybe more established and more a gig that kind of gave you that confidence to keep going and that you kind of had moved here for the right reason? I think when I was just paying my bills, yeah. when I'm after moving here for a little bit, because I mean, back in Cincinnati, like all of us were doing that too as musicians. It was, it's a little less intense there, you know, like. You could play a wedding gig and you're kind of like, you're in college, you're like, oh, sweet, I'm covered. Yeah. yeah. You know, but um, I think once I was able to kind of like pay my bills doing it, you know, that was like, again, my, my bills weren't like crazy or anything, but like minus the bank calling me. But right. I was like, man, I'm covering my rent. I'm covering my bills. You know, I'm living with my buddies. I love the band I'm playing with downtown. Like, you know, and I'm going on the road on some weekends with some of my other friends' projects. Like, I'm really happy. And that mm -hmm. took, like, two or three years to kind of get some kind of footing here and figure out how to, like, handle certain situations and yeah. and finally be in a place to say, you know what? Again, it's like I can change my mindset. And one of those was, like, a revelation of, like, okay, maybe I can start saying no to some stuff now. And that was <laughs> a really is. cool feeling. <laughs> and that was, like, one of my buddies told me that. And he's like, man— at this point, like, because you move there, you're desperate, and then you get the ball rolling, and then you realize you're almost too busy, but not in the best ways. Mm -hmm. And some of the gigs are like, man, why? And then once you start asking yourself, why am I putting my time into that? Yeah. That's when you're like, oh, that's a luxury, too, for even me to just be able to think about. Like, yeah. Take a step like, back yeah, and Yeah, analyze. take a step back and be like, man, I don't want to do that, because that's going to, like, I'm just, I just don't want to. So I'm going to yeah. be more available for this stuff and do this stuff better. That was a revelation, too. Yeah. So I think those kind of two moments for me where I was like, I finally feel confident here. And then honestly getting the Parker or getting the Parker, you're playing with them. I don't even want to call yeah. it a gig because mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like one. It's just, I don't definitely want to go into that, that yeah. story, you know, um, that transition. That's definitely been another kind of level to that too. Again, getting, getting yeah. to check off a lot of new things off the list this year has definitely given me a little bit of confidence yeah, in some of sure. those things too. But, but yeah. definitely when you're like, man, I'm paying my rent and I got a little extra tip money, like you get a little wad of cash on your dresser. You're like, yeah, yeah. this is kind of fun. You know, I'm going to, I can do this for a couple of years and, you know, and, keep trying to make things move but i was like yeah, yeah. man I, I i can do this every week you know like once or twice and just like then go home and record and like practice and work on the other stuff i care about and, i think it's a really healthy mindset just like celebrate like the wins don't have to be major wins you know it's not like oh well, i'm no, not gonna dude. be happy until i'm playing in a stadium i'm not gonna consider myself a drummer right versus like i'm just i can pay rent like you said you know and like for us in this podcast i feel like it's pretty similar we're starting to get more attention and sponsors or whatever it's like okay we can start to you know, recoup some of those expenses. Yeah. That is a win within itself. Oh, and as you well. got to celebrate them too. Cause yeah. even like the smaller, even like the micro wins. Cause I mean, like no one else will fully understand it for you, but individually, like we all get it. But like, yeah. Even little things like, I mean, one of my first gigs where I was like, you know what? It was like my first year in town. I was like, I'm going to have every song charted out. I just remember being in that mindset too. Yeah. And I'm going to make sure every song is charted really well. And I'm just going to like make sure I say, like, you just set small goals, even gig by gig. And it's like, okay, I just got this gig. Uh, I don't feel great about it. This dude seems sketchy, but hey, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, my buddy threw my name out. So it's almost like you're doing it more for your friend mm -hmm. as an appreciation for like other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, okay, you know what? I'm going to show up. I'm going to play every song like the record. Because when I moved here too, that wasn't like really my mindset either. Like back home, it was like... The original don't, stuff. Yeah, right. don't try to like do that. Yeah. So moving here, it was like... And people are like, hey, I want this right here, like that. And I'm like, oh, shit, okay, like, all right, now that's a new goal. So you just start yeah. adding a checklist of gig by gig of, like, no matter who you're playing with or what it is, every show is just like, man, I want to be better this weekend at this, or I, I want to be that. a better hang that's this so cool. weekend, or, like... Like, picking out those, extracting those things from yeah, every Yeah, and the gig moment. doesn't have to be, like, the best thing in the world. It's all yeah. the fucking same, dude. Even when I'm doing... I'm actually, like, doing less stuff, per se, with playing with Parker... Than what I did on other gigs, like just some of my friends, like when I would be running like backing tracks and like designing the show and doing all this extra stuff. But man, like no matter what the gig is, it's the same motions. It really, it's just like, it's doing the exact same thing. It's like, okay, well for this gig, it's like I'm playing my buddy's like hometown in Decatur, Illinois in the middle of cornfields, but we're running backing tracks. He's expecting me to design the intros for some of the stuff and I'm running the show. So I don't give a fuck if there's two people in there or three or like I'm playing a fucking stadium. Mm -hmm. I don't give a shit. It's the exact same motion. And I, I, it's like the crowds almost don't really matter. It's yeah. like literally like because you just the people you're playing with are like all that really fucking matter in those yeah. situations. Yeah. You know, and, but it's like it's all the same. It's like if I can do this well in this situation, you know, and that's important. It's like if you can't, 
it's like, okay, then maybe I have to be realistic. Like, I think I want this and I, and, and I should have this now, but it's like, I need to wait yeah. until I can do it in this setting. Cause if I can't do it in this like kind of basic setting, then how am I expected to do it when there's like more pressure? Yeah. Yeah. And it's not even, the role hasn't changed. It's just, there's more people expecting you to do everything right. Yeah. You know, and there's really no room for it to go wrong. Well, and if it mindset. does, you better be a little like, you know, like <laughs> it reminds me of like during the pandemic, you know, like the professional athletes that had to play basically empty stadiums, mm-hmm. you know, but it's like, they're not yes. going to not play. They're not going to play worse. Like they have to still, you know, it's, it's a competitive. Thing, yeah. Honestly, that was the you know? weirdest thing I have ever seen in my life. Watching not, I don't watch baseball, but like whenever I would yeah, be in the bar and, 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 yeah. and like the fake people out the there, like people, yeah. Just no. Well, wait, wait, where was it? They, they all, all the baseball they, games. Yeah. They would they put like fake people. These like cardboard. Why didn't do like, that? Just like, keep that's it just, empty. That's just creepy, bro. Because yeah. you're gonna see like one person out there at one point. And you're like, ah, <laughs> my god, what is that? That's a real guy out there. Yeah. I hate this. Yep. So there were uh, two dudes that Parker was working with. It's kind of like a company where they'll work with bands. You know, and they'll do a lot of backing track stuff, help design shows and help them like basically if you need a drummer or a full band or anything like that. And they found me on Instagram, coincidentally, which you don't really ever think about anyone. Okay, I don't at least I never thought about people actually looking at my account. <laughs> well, but, I think that's how we connected. Funny enough. Oh, was it really? Right which on? is another reason why we should follow Nashville Drummers Podcast. Mm, which is a good time to plug. Nashville yeah. Drummers Podcast on Instagram. There we go. I was waiting for your voice to that was nice. settle in. There's a drummer, uh, dude who's been like really killing it lately too, named Andrew Grasso. Grasso, yeah, yeah. He's, he's playing yeah. with Gale right now, which is cool because yeah. you don't. He's a pearl guy. You don't normally see a lot of dudes playing with like major pop acts out of Nashville, and he's fucking killing everybody right now, dude. Yeah, I think he's like pretty much in Europe all year most of the time right wow. now. Wow. Yeah, but dude, he seems awesome. I'm, I haven't personally met the guy either, but we both kind of got you know like I started playing with Parker at the same time we started playing with Gale. Um, and I just remember like, and I think it was through uh, the same du- dudes that got me on the Parker gig, um, got him on the Gale thing. Yeah. So it was cool to kind of watch him just like fucking crush, man. He's dude. Uh, he, and he's, and he's running with it, man. It's, it's cool. It's fun, man. I love seeing people like writing that name down. You, you, you were familiar. I wasn't. Yeah. Um, never met the guy too, but it's, but again, that's similar timing from, you know, the mutual people we met and those two dudes too. I forgot to mention that company was called like built by pain. This guy named Matt Pan who runs it. When they found me on Instagram, they also want to want to like make it clear that they came to Broadway to go see me play too. Mm-hmm. So for any musicians cool. that like moved to Nashville and they're younger, or like maybe they left music school and they're feeling kind of hot and they're like, "I'm too good for this and this." And I think sometimes people think they're too good for Broadway. Yeah. The current situation I'm in now is partially because two dudes came to like. For, if you're not busy, yeah. you don't have a right to be picky, you know. So exactly. if you move here, be open minded. And it's like at the end of the day, if you're gonna musician. You should be able to like say, yeah, I can do this gig. Go down there, say yes to the three hour, whatever. If you think it's bullshit, it's whatever. You're still going to get something out of it. Yeah. yeah. They came to go see me play. And granted, the first couple auditions they put me on, it was great because I didn't get them. But that was great because I would still be like, okay, cool. Yeah. I still got to keep moving. Go downtown, go play. Yeah, I humbled do you. Do whatever shit. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Dude. Not that I, you weren't humble, but just No, but it was that just fire, nice right? to know how to like just kind of handle... Not necessarily failure, just someone to say, hey, like you weren't the right person for this. And to yeah. sit there and let people make a decision on you. I hadn't done that in a while. So to yeah. like most of the stuff I was doing was through friends. So that was like really healthy to go through that and be like, well, third person in a row, they said no. So it's like, you know, and they would tell me stuff too, like, hey man, tweak your snare for this gig, try this out. Hmm. Um and That's then really the Parker helpful. thing came along and they gave me a little bit of advice and, and again to being open minded. Like I didn't come in there with like, no, that's not my sound. That's not how I do it. They said, hey, man, you're playing an aluminum, like Yamaha recording snare. It sounds great, but it's too high and it's not the right snare. Find some just like six and a half or five inch, like 14 by five maple snare, mid tune it, get a bigger stick, get some brighter cymbals. And that's exactly what I did. Huh. So I walked into the Parker gig wow. with that. And granted, as times progress with that, with playing with them, like the setups changed a little bit and yeah. the stuff softened because yeah. I've kind of been able to fit a little bit better for what they need. And but being open minded, man, they told me that stuff and they said, Hey, let him know that you sing too. Mm-hmm. So I was like, All right, cool. So I did that, didn't hear from him for a few weeks. And coincidentally, he called me when I was about to go play a game on Broadway <laughs> for my friend, that, that band I'd play with all the time down there. Yeah. But I was still like, Hey man, can I call you back? Like, I gotta go play a gig. And I didn't wanna do that, but I was like, I gotta go. So it's like, you know, priority. Yeah. And <laughs> then the next morning I called him and kind of got things hashed out about, you know, what the year would look like and it all happened really fast. But yeah. 
had to make a bunch of calls and but it was fun too because I got to call some other friends and get them on some gigs that I had and that's always fun um, right? that you know paid my bills when I was in town yeah, yeah. and that just, that's so invaluable you know so it was all around a really cool situation mm-hmm. you know so you mentioned that they found you on Instagram. Like, were you already putting a lot of effort into content or was that just not like to a be like found for gigs? I was just like, right. it was for me, it was just great practice. Like, I think maybe a lot of people can agree to like record yourself, you know, and, and just listen back and be, oh, this sounds cool. Maybe I'll share it and just kind of like show yeah. what you're doing in this virtual little room for every, it, I love Instagram for musicians. It's been so great. Mm-hmm. We can all kind of feature what we do. And, um, but yeah, just covers or me just playing. I was just like, I'm just going to post me because I was, Still worried about not being like, like the most trendy kind of drummer or really or anything like that. But mm-hmm. really kind of leaning into it. It's like if I like it, I'm going to share it. So I was kind of learning how to be secure in that too. And yeah. yeah. That's but they important. saw something on there. I mean, I I would go live when I played downtown too for fun and just so my <laughs> friends could watch. You know, just just fucking does. around, yeah. man. Just you know, just having fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, they saw something they liked and they were. It was really cool. They were determined to get me on something, so I That's appreciate so cool. that. You kind of shared your story about people finding you through YouTube. Right. And it's like, I mean, of course, they probably saw talent, right? Like, obviously, you can play. That has to be part of it. But just, I feel like people seeing your, like, your true character, like that authenticity, maybe it's not the most polished videos or, you know, you going mm-hmm. live on Broadway. Like, mm-hmm. oh, like this, this guy's a cool dude. Like, he's, he's very down to earth. He's doing yeah. his thing. Like, I think that's valuable. Yeah. Dude, as well, I mean, the, the time that goes into making, like, that, that, that's a hard thing, too. There's a lot of that, I mean, the expectation. I'm sure you talked with some drummers of, like, having to make content, having to film. And, and that's, uh, quite honestly, man, that that side of things just, like, it drains me. And I would yeah. only do it from time to time. And I'm like, I just want to go play. I just, like, I don't care if anyone knows me. I just want to, like, just be a working musician, you mm-hmm. know, and, and kind of hopefully navigate it to where I can do exactly what I want, play with the people I want. But yeah. It's it's like I don't care if anyone that, like never hears about me. I was like I just want to work. You know, I just want to play, <laughs> yeah, especially yeah. after the past couple of years. Sure. And that whole if if that whole content side of things, just like it's just, and I talk about so many buddies about that too. They're like, man, I just don't want to put in the time to do this. And it's like that's okay. So I'm just trying to lean into that. It's a point. lot of time because I am. It is, man. I oh yeah. God. I mean, I put out a lot of content. Yeah, it's and, like, cutting um, all that up. And yeah, it's it's a balance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just not patient enough too. So I think it, I think that should always sort of be second. Like you have the right mindset of like. Well, I just want to play. Like, I want to play drums first and foremost. If I can mm-hmm. create some cool content alongside yeah. of that, that's that's great. Yeah. But it's not like, oh, I need to do, I need to be this trendy drummer on social media mm-hmm. first. You know, it's like a backwards. And that's mindset. not the best excuse too, because there's some dudes who they're doing way more than I do, and they still have time to like, you know, video everything and do like a tour vlog and all that. So I'm just like, yeah, it, it just depends. Like, you never know. Like, some pe- a lot of people have like, maybe I'll get to that point, a whole team but... doing video. Like, I right now really? I have, uh, you know, I'll hire people to, to film it. I, I still all the editing because I'm just thinking like, where do you guys find the but... time to do? And just like being yeah, being really adult to too, like have a to... process. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll get into that at some point. <laughs> yeah. I try to shape it in a way where I find it valuable, but yeah. I feel like I still have a lot more experience to gain before I can just start like sharing like my thoughts, even sometimes or opinions on stuff. Right. You yeah. Know? Cause I remember like the dudes I look up to, I was like, when they talked, I'd shut up. Cause it's like, <laughs> cause I mean like everything there's, I, there's nothing I need to say. I can just listen. Mm. And you know, so I kind of want to maybe one day get to a fraction of that. So if I, I think if more I do people drop need my to have opinion, that's actually of some value, you know? Yeah. I think the negative Aspect of social media is that we're all just kind of screaming, right? We're all having an opinion. Everyone's look at everyone me, look at me, right look at this, look yeah. at that. But like to you, what you just said, like just take a step back and listen. Yeah, I almost want to like withdraw more from that stuff a little yeah. bit because of the pressure to do it, or like filling out like endorsement stuff. You know, it's like how many? I'm like, man, I, this is a losing battle because I'm not like a drummer's drummer. I just need people. To, I just need help. Like when I call, I need like a cracked cymbal replaced. Yeah. You know? you know, with a company that'll respond. So I'm like, I'm really not asking for much. And so that, that whole yeah. thing too, I was like, I'm like, I'm not this and I don't want to be this. I just like, but I like you're doing, doing the right thing. And I, I, yeah. that comes from my experience, you know, with being at a, mm-hmm. a brand like Pearl. Ultimately it comes down to the gig you have, mm-hmm. you know, all the other stuff is yeah, as important. Got. So yeah, so take us back. So you got the Paul, right. From, from Parker. And then kind of what was the next step after that? Um, from that point there actually, it was actually a little <laughs> nerve wracking because the, the main guy who brought me on, he said, he said at this point, like you have the gig, you don't have to worry about that. You know, there was no kind of like a week later, hey man, sorry, this fell through or some crit. You know, yeah. it, it, it was a little bit of trust because they're saying, hey, call everyone you know and everything you got for the year and cancel it. And that was tough for me because all those people I'd been working with for a couple of years and yeah. they're like my friends and people, yeah. you know, we all made money together on the road and we loved like playing with each other creatively yep. and everything. And, but he said, call everything you have for the year, cancel it. 
He says, and I'll let you know when I have more information. And I'm like, jeez. And I'm trying not to be, I'm not trying to act like, man, I got to know. Okay. I'm not trying to, I'm just, I'm saying, just trust him, relax. Cause I was pretty anxious about the whole transition and, right. and just having to call these people and say, just like, Hey, I'm the whole, yep. The whole year and you know, everything we had. No. Yeah. Call him, call that guy. Yeah. You know, it's pretty surreal. Like it was a cool situation to, given, to do that. Yeah. But like, yeah. Had that conversation and then finally heard from him. Again, he said, hey, this date you'll fly to Texas, you'll meet the guys, and then you'll rehearse for about three days. And then it was out right on the bus and, and right out to shows because they had like a full schedule. There really wasn't a lot of time to do it. Mm-hmm. And then so I remember walking in, I was like I flew into Austin, stayed there that night, and then woke up and went to this rehearsal space and met all the guys in the band for the first time there, meeting me for the first time. Some of them knew about the transition like two weeks before, I think. So it was all really fast for everybody. Yeah. So were you replacing a drummer? Like, was, were you kind of like the first touring drummer for this no, artist? No, he's had a, um, the last drummer he had played with him for, for a long time and mm-hmm. has that real cool, like, Texas country kind of like touch. But I guess for what they wanted, they needed someone a little more like, like, just like a Nashville kind of like hit a little harder, a little, little tighter, I guess, or whatever, whatever he was told, like, hey, like, this is kind of what we need to do to, Kind of mm-hmm. take the show this direction. Cool. I guess I, you know, I was doing that, and yeah. the singing part definitely helped. Uh, that's just mm-hmm. like, if if you can be a drummer and can just learn, like any drummer, listen to this. If you can learn to hold a note, you don't have to be a good singer to sing as a drummer. Yeah. If you can hold a note, I'll back off the mic now. If you can <laughs> hold a note and just like chime in on the chorus, do the third above or below mm-hmm. the guy, singers will be like, yes, thank you so much. Obviously, you know, try to grow from that, but like. If you're looking to, you know, be a little more valuable and you're in a town like this where there's so many guys who can kind of fill the seat of a lot of these gigs here, you know, per se, try to find something, something like that. Just like, and there's a couple of drummers I've seen that I've talked to this year and told them like, Hey, do this. They got a mic. They got like a cheap mic. They have it hooked up. You don't have to chime in on the gig at the time. Just whenever you feel comfortable, yeah. just they'll look back and be like, yeah, man. And you're. You're good. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> yep. It doesn't have to be like this huge thing that you do, but it definitely like is a little perk. Yeah. You know. That's a, yeah. It's it's yeah. not that much of a commitment, really. You no, really it's, it's not, a very man. low, very low barrier to entry. You don't have to be super involved with it. Right. Um, yeah. Low risk, very high rewards. Yeah. I know. I know. I can hit this note. Absolutely. Cool. This will be a a boon to the song. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. It's Great. Like, pro- I feel like mo- probably most of us could. I mean, we're musicians. Yeah. Right, I mean, yeah, you should be able to, you know, try to at least or at least hear harmony to some yeah. extent. Uh, uh, like most drummers, I feel like you should, or like, holy shit, you want to get good at that stuff? Buy a bass, start playing some bass. That yes. helps with your pitch too. If you can like play some of these songs on bass too, you almost learn the drum part a little quicker sometimes because the drums aren't super hard in some of this stuff. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, and, and like, even tinkering on bass, it's so healthy, man. It's so good for you. It is, drummer. and it give it renews the perspective or gives you. a I think the proper perspective of what a bassist would want from a drummer. Yeah. No, like they're I, feeling when you're, you know, if you're a drummer, who's like, just not making it feel good. Know right. what that feels like. And it's like, Oh, oh okay. So when, when I've had nights where I'm just, it's something's not feeling good. And the bass player's not loving it too. Like, this is what it right. felt like. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm, oh. You just want to call somebody and be like, yeah, I'm right. sorry about that one game. Oh, I get it now. And yeah. you know, I was playing like this and I understand now like, how <laughs> bored you must have been for this, yeah. you know? Oh, Dude, yeah, but again, it. like country music is a great little playground for that stuff sometimes. Mm. Um, but on the other hand, I, I I do wish that it's like if you're gonna move here, expect to play a little bit of country. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to lean into it, great. If you don't, right. you know, find another route. But like that music is a great place to kind of learn like a lot of basics. You yeah, know? It it's some I love that, that word playground. It really is. You know, yeah, man. And that's what Broadway. Me and my me and my buddies, um, the girl we were playing with all the time. Her name is Rachel Horder. She's like incredible singer. And um, it was me, a friend of mine named Seth Cook, who just moved to Los Angeles, actually. He was a killer producer here. Amazing yeah. player. I mean, in- incredible guitar player and singer. Yeah. Um, and he just moved there. And uh, a bass player named Brogan Dutcher. Oh, nice. And uh, we'd play like Old Red a bunch. And it was so much fun. Um, and we called that place the gym. Because sometimes they're like, <laughs> man, like I'd rather be at home like shutting my stuff or working on other shit. Sometimes I necessarily don't want to go down there and play like three hours of this stuff. So like if we're gonna go down there, let's have some fucking fun. Yeah. Let's change it up a little bit. And she had such great pockets, so we could like really mess around and go for shit. But it was like we called it the gym. It's like yeah. I'm gonna go downtown and I'm gonna work out for three hours. Yes. And if I you know, it's a great way to keep your chops in order. There's a there's a drummer named um 
Oh, his name's uh, he plays for Dustin Lynch. His name's um, oh man, this is embarrassing. Uh, Billy, Billy something. Yeah, I'll see him uh, down there sometimes. He's still playing. It's like there's still a lot of drummers who are like they're on killer gigs and they still go down there and play because it's a great place to oh, just yeah. like. I think well, I know. Keep, I think I know who you're talking moving. about. Yeah. In fact, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna look and see if it's the same to, guy I'm thinking I, of. I hate that I forget. It. Like again, I'm so bad um, at that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, Jake Summers does that. You know. I mean. Yeah, dude. It's, it's, I cannot. It's a gym. I couldn't it's believe a playground. that. Like, go yeah. down there and be like, I'm gonna go because it's it's again. There's always gonna be bands playing down there. There's always gonna be like tourists. If you want to just go play a gig, go on Broadway and just like. Again, be open minded. I, I feel like some people will move here and be like, "Oh, I'm not going on Broadway." It's uh, like, Billy mm-hmm. Freeman. Yeah, Billy Freeman. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Billy yeah, Joe yeah. Freeman. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Dude, great like, player to watch, yeah. man. He's yeah, he's he's killer. Yeah, his kit sounds incredible too. Mm-hmm. What um, we were doing a show with Parker. It was like I think it was called like one of these like country thunder festivals. And uh, no, this is before him. But Dustin Lynch was still like the headliner, and so I got to kind of go those. To go stage side and you know see Billy. This before I knew who he was really. And he sat behind the kid and yeah, my God, dude, that kit sounds. Inc- it's a Ludwig. I think he's playing. Oh my God, dude! It was just, like I, I still hear it. It was amazing, yeah. and it was. It, it's just fun when you hear people who just have their sound dialed in, and they're just doing their thing right and they're doing it well. And he's one of those guys in town to see that was just like, yeah. oh man, this. It, it was fun, man. He's. I didn't talk to him. I just. I hate bothering like musicians I see on the road sometimes and. But again, I, that's my whole point. Though, is he'll he'll do some of that crazy stuff or some of those really great shows with uh, Dustin, and then I guess he, I think I'm assuming he'll just go downtown and, and play other stuff too. Yeah. So I really I I wish more musicians who moved here were, and I think some are, but I know there's some people I think they kind of ride off Broadway yeah, a little yeah, bit. They totally. think it's like oh, I'm 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 not gonna go down there and play three I'm, hours of this. But I'm it's too like, good for that. Yeah. Man, mm-hmm. go down there and just see what happens. And there might be some stuff where you're like, you know what? I actually suck at that. I mean, yeah. we'd work on this. For me, it was like how to keep a three-hour set moving. Yeah. You know, even like yeah. little tricks like, okay, after like for the first like five songs, we're not going to stop. You know, and literally like as you hit the downbeat, you just literally start playing the next song. And learning yeah. shit like that was super oh, helpful. Man. And just and so, yeah, Broadway to me is just like, it's it's a really great playground. And on top of that, you get paid to play. Yeah. You know, there's not a lot of streets like that in the country, I think, no. that I'm it's aware pretty, of. It's a pretty good gig. I mean, and you can actually, you know, again, yeah. cover your bill. Like... <laughs> It's there's yeah. not a lot of streets like it, man. No, um, and no. I'm, I'm really grateful for that street. Yeah. For I sure. make a good living doing that. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. It, it's it, again, there's just no place like that where it's like, <laughs> man, I, I I need to make some money. It's like, well, do you want to play for like 12 hours today downtown? Yeah. It's like, yeah, you, it's you like, can. You can. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you want to play? I know those downtown? guys who are just yeah. like doing freaking on triples. Like, there's so much work there. Oh they God. literally call yeah. it shifts. Yeah, like yeah, that's, exactly. that's so much work there is on that street. Yeah, I met a dude who played Broadway. For a whole year, and he said, "I'm going to make a hundred thousand dollars doing it." Granted, if you broke down yeah. the amount of time you played in the hours, it's like less than minimum wage. But still, <laughs> yeah. holy still, shit, the dude yeah. made a hundred thousand dollars playing like twelve hours a day on Broadway, and he playing did drums. it. Yeah. yeah, and you, the fact that you can go that crazy, it's like, yeah, yeah good for you, man. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if, if you get, I'm just going to say, if you get better gigs than that, it doesn't take triples to make that money. Oh, like, yeah. you can, totally. you can. There are some shifts that not all shifts down there are created equal. No, no. dude. There's <laughs> yeah. like places that we play like Old Red were really the people who own those venues and those bars and how they run them. Yep. It's it's a huge difference. Yep. And if you're your playing with a band well. that knows how to get people to part with their money, yeah, man. <laughs> it's it That's is a, a different part of it. It yeah. is a different experience. You're like, oh yeah, these guys know how to get tips. If, if you yeah. have an open mind and you just like and you just don't care who you're playing with or what you're playing. You just yeah. want to play. Yeah. And you don't know what to do when you move to town. Just Bro. go down there, man. 100%. And you're guaranteed to, you know, fill in for somebody. And then gets, yeah. It's just never short of musicians down there. Yep. So. Okay, so you have covered an immense amount of ground here. But what? I, let's go into, kind of go into end zone questions. Is there anything playing the gig that you're playing that you would want to share advice-wise with Players coming to town, players who already are in town and are looking to move toward landing a gig or mm-hmm. really solidifying a gig with an artist like that. Yeah. What gold nuggets can you give to those listeners? Man, I think it's tough if you're a drummer who has like a serious identity about like you're playing. Yeah. I guess mine is like playing for other people. So a lot of times when I'm asked to play a certain way or do something, I'm happy to do that. Mm. Because a lot of times I don't think I've, I've been called specifically because I'm like 
John Bostwick. I'm I'm called because I can. I work really hard to try to like you know cater to whoever I'm playing for. Even yeah, if it goes so you're kind against, of a chameleon. So it sounds like. Uh, yeah, you know, and, and not in the credit I should be given for that because there's some dudes that can really blend in certain things, but yeah. just trying to cater to every player in, in a certain way because everyone's a little different and really doing what maybe like the music director wants. I think that's something that's helped too. I I, I think I'm pretty easy to work with. Yeah. In most settings, and if someone's got an idea and they're like, "Hey, man, we really want this," I'm, I'm like, "Yeah, let's do it." You know, really, yeah. really, I, I think an overall theme for all this is just be open minded. Yeah. Um, like they were telling me, like before, you know, auditioning for Parker, they were they were saying like, "Hey, man, your snare's just not feeling this way," and and I was like, "Well, it's been working for." I didn't go like, "Well, I've, I've always had my snare tuned this way," or yeah. "This is like my workhorse and it's worked." So like, yeah, you know, fuck off. I was like, "Oh shit, okay, cool." I, I think anyone who gives you the time of day and is willing to tell you something. Yeah, especially here. Take the fucking hand, man. Like yeah. that's huge. They'll save you a lot of time, and and it. And so for me, it's just being in any situation where they say, "Hey, we really want this sound," or "Can we do this kind of thing?" Or "Can we like?" It's got to feel like a little bit more like, a little wider or a little tighter. Like being able to like, being able to say, "Yeah, let, let's try to get that feel together." Being able to do those things, I think, is really valuable. So I I really tell people like, have an ego in the right ways, but really try yeah. to just when someone asks something of you. Make sure it doesn't affect your inner like artist or inner right. creative mm-hmm. on that instrument as well. Right. Know that you're on that gig to do what they're asking you to do. And if you do have the chance to have some creative input or you're in a position to do those kind of things too, that's great. But yeah. if they're saying, hey, meat potatoes, form floor, you know, just keep it real basic. Right. Don't do anything else and just sing this on the choruses. Just do that. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think now more than ever, I feel a little more confident creatively. Yeah. But it's not what pays my bills. Right. Um, yeah. But that's why I love working with different artists. I love when, you know, people say, hey, this, it's got to feel like this. And, or we want it to like go this way or just trying to like sing with some of these people too, you know, and, and, and like match their, their vocal pocket is really cool. I like doing that too. And mm-hmm. it's just fun, man. I, I like, I like having things for my brain to like chew on. Yeah. And that's why I like doing drums for a living. Cause it's, it's the one gig where you can like be <laughs> running backing tracks, <laughs> calling like the next song and your other talk back or like, singing as well like there's a lot you're doing a lot and you're trying to make it look very like calm and simple yeah and that's kind of like my brain loves that shit (laughs) so i'd say just you know be open-minded and just if people ask you to do something just just do it and do it really well you know Mm -hmm. at least especially if you said yes to it you know keep an open mind to what comes your way whatever you do just do it well even if you think the gig's bullshit I'm not saying what I'm doing right now is bullshit at all. Let's be clear. But like, you know, if, if you're new to town and you're moving somewhere, you're going you're gonna to have to say yes, some stuff you don't want to do. Keep yeah. an open mind and just do it yeah. and know that it's not necessarily reflecting you, but how you perform at that gig. It could be the dumbest gig in the world, but people are going to still look at how well you did. And that's, that's like your business card right there. So whatever you say yes to, even if it's like, well, shit, I got to pay my rent. Yeah, I'll play five hours and you know in a in a cornfield for a county fair. Yeah, you know, and just keep be positive with it too, man. There's a lot of sides of this job and and this path that we all choose to kind of do this or put our time into this stuff. Um, that's really mostly discouraging most of the time. Yeah. So just the, the the little wins and all the things that you can find to like help you push through and encourage your friends and celebrate their victories too. You know, if you get buddies who get on a gig or have something cool happen with their playing, just be that be as happy as you can be for them. Because the more people you have winning around you too, that just means you're gonna, I feel like, kind of have some of that fall into your lap too. Hell you yeah, know. hell yeah. Still Network across, that. <laughs> not up. That was great. Don't yeah. try to be with the best people. Try to work with people who actually just like are kind of yeah. at your level and have the same drive. Yeah. And everyone's going to do something. Yeah. I've never seen anyone move here that just like, they put in an excruciating amount of effort and energy into this and nothing didn't happen. I just, mm-hmm. I've never, I just don't see it play out like that. That's our worst fear, but I've just, I really <laughs> haven't seen. Most right. people who don't kind of get the success they want, at least here from what I've noticed, or just like day to day kind of have the outcome they want. It's very rarely because like they're not trying hard enough. Everyone here is usually giving the max amount of effort. And, mm-hmm. and that's like, that's all you can fucking do, yeah. man. Just have fun, man. Shit's Love crazy, it. you know? <laughs> Shall we do Woo! some uh, rapid fire questions? Yeah, hit me. So we're, we already got your cookout order. Oh, Let's right. do, um, if you weren't playing drums, you would be doing. Man, that's a great question. Um, man, if I wasn't playing drums, I would still want to work in music. I'd love to be in show design. Okay. Um, I love cool. that. I love that side of it as well. I love being off the. St- I, I like the idea of being off the stage, 
and kind of like the two dudes who you know got me some audition and stuff i love that kind of work yeah um that is something if, if my hands gave out and my legs stopped working i'd be like well you know what i can still like talk into a mic and and try to like get a show built for people yeah. I, I love that kind of i think that stuff's so exciting mm-hmm. it's like i don't know i think it's such a cool relationship yeah totally do you do the hot chicken man i've never had a hot chicken sandwich since i moved to nashville what i've never had one do you like spicy uh, I'm bad with spice. Okay. I'm very bad. Okay. I'm from Ohio, so the yeah. spice levels are a little different there. Okay. Even like pepper, like black pepper, I'll start sweating. So <laughs> All right. Well, then that answers my question. Okay. I got one more deep question, then, then you're free. Oh so as, as someone that's been here, you know, six to nine years, you said, or seven years? I think right? it's been over six years. Six years? Okay. Yeah. So you've probably more than most, you've seen kind of Nashville change a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. And, Construction, traffic, whatever you yeah. want to call it. What's something when you think about the future of Nashville, like the next five, ten years, that excites you? Man, I, w- I was just talking with a drummer buddy of mine about this, and we kind of wonder, just like you just wonder how how long does does a, a certain city have, like how long does a mu- music scene have, like have to live in certain like situations, like here? Because man, I have no idea. Part of me thinks like. All right, I need to pay attention to where all the tour companies and production companies move if shit gets too crazy here. Because mm-hmm. sometimes I wonder, maybe in 10 years, is all this stuff going to be gone? I could be wrong. Someone might listen to this and be like, that's not, that's way off. But I wonder because, like, like the exit in, right? Exit in going out? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and I don't think a lot of the industry stuff is going to still get pushed out. But um, it's going to make this town short of a lot of lot of talent, I think, if it's almost impossible to live here at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was the question again? I kind of lost track of it. Yeah, just maybe something uh, on the other side of that, more positive of something that... <laughs> yeah, a little bit <laughs> no, of a pessimist. <laughs> no, that's, I mean, that's a, a realistic thing. Just something that maybe excites you about the change. One thing I do love is the, the sturdiness of the local scene in Nashville. Like, if you're not on the road, you're playing in town and all of that. You know, anything from like Ruiz Jazz Club to Broadway to, yeah. you know, any any place you can play music in town. I, I don't see that stuff slowing down at all. That excites me. Yeah. Um, if not, I see only more development going on. That means, you know, more tourism. But some yeah. people don't like that. But it also means more, more work and, and yeah. more stuff for for arts, which tends to kind of go away when when shit's tough. It's yeah. art, artists are getting paid now. Yeah. Man, paid it, paid to especially do stuff. after especially after COVID, it's like at this point, it's like if you can again just kind of cover your bills and you're happy with that, you can definitely do that, man. And that that is a gift in itself. Oh, that's a great point. Yeah, yeah. love it. Perfect. Cool. That was a tough question. You know, I was really, that was great I, answer, I, I yeah. ask myself that every day. Like, what's what's gonna happen? Here, Trying to right? ask the tough ones on here. Yeah. yeah, at least I wasn't eating some spicy. <laughs> but, Sweet, man. I appreciate you guys having me. Thanks for listening to this episode of the National Drummers Podcast. If you liked it, please consider leaving us a review on the Apple Podcast app. Also, check out our new website, NashvilleDrummersPodcast.com. And if you're not already following us on Instagram, you can follow us at Nashville Drummers Podcast. This episode was recorded at Diamond Sound Studios, located in Nashville, Tennessee. Sponsored by Music Lab Nashville. Production by The Wise Company. Thank you for listening, listening, and we'll see you in the next episode. episode.